It's part four of our conversation with the great Pick Withers. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. This is so cool. I'd like to ask if he played the songs in an improv approach, or did he, this is Dire Straits, of course, or did he compose his parts to be exactly as we heard them on the records? Thanks, John. Whatever the record was, that would be the part, and the, but then it would become a roadmap. You know, I'm of the school where I, I like to step out onto the high wire, and I'm quite prepared for the consequences of doing that. You know, even when you're seasoned, you know, you can fall off, and that that's that's the risk you take. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, that, you know, I mean, it comes back to that thing about twiddling the stick and having a spot on you. I don't want to be constrained by, this is when I do this, this is when I do that. I just use the, the whole thing as a, a kind of a road map. Like, yeah, this, we stop here. This is louder. This is quieter. This is a crescendo, you know. This, you know, this is where I pray cross sticks. But I'm, I'm always looking for different things to play, but it's only in response to what I'm hearing. It's not, I think we should do this now. I, I don't, you know, I don't want to really just do something for the sake of it. I mean, one of the traps that I used to find, find is I would play with people and the repertoire would be kind of slowly built up through recording. And then you, but so you would concentrate on one song at a time. And then you would, would you do a tour? Yeah, I'll do it all. And you come to rehearsal and you find out shit, they're all the same rhythm. And you try to you try to kind of manipulate it and it doesn't work because it worked for the song, you know, and you have to kind of sit back and just just do it. But um it's that awful danger of uh, feeling disinterested because you, you, you there the, the comes a point when you're playing, you're having outside of body experiences. You, you, your, your muscles are doing it all, but you're somewhere else. Yeah. Because you, and that's awful. It's an awful feeling. It's, it's like the driving of the car. So, sorry to use the same analogy again. To, oh, did I just drive that last mile? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't knock anybody out. I know I didn't knock anybody out. I didn't go through a red light or anything, but I wasn't, I wasn't that kind of, um, you know, irresponsible. But, wow, what happened there? <laughs> I learned in Dire Straits that you come off stage, I would never participate in any post-mortems five minutes after we played for two hours. And I was like, I'll, I'll talk about it in the morning. I'm not going to have anything to do with it now. I used to put signs up on the dressing room, but post-mortem in progress, don't enter. And I would just go away. I just couldn't abide it. After the show, I wouldn't discuss anything you know, until the... Unless it was really, really wrong. You know, oh, sorry, I messed up that up. So maybe I counted that in too fast. But I, would, I don't want to discuss anything relevant to the gig because there'll be almost five different opinions. Yeah. Somebody had a great gig. Oh, did you? <laughs> well, I didn't. <laughs> Sound where I was was dreadful. I couldn't hear the guitar, couldn't you? Just, I could hear the drums. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you did. Now, all I could hear in my place was just this booming bass some tinkling of ivories, the voice, and uh, the guitar solos. And it was just, it was just, and every time I played the bass drum, it, woo, it was this sonic boom, and it just really interfered with my ability to, to, to play with comfort. What are the people for you with the, that, that, uh, that, as far as a drummer, that when you heard them play, you went, that guy means it. I get it. I'm getting, I'm getting it. It makes me feel something, you know? I was in traffic once and they were playing Phil Collins, uh, something in the air. Yeah, in the air night. And I saw all these people do the drum fill on the, on the driving wheels and on the steering wheels when it came round. It was hot day, windows were open. It was just fantastic. It was just fantastic to see that there's somebody who, you know, who meant it. Sometimes it can be just an in, intangible thing. I mean, I do like Bonham for his kind of power. I mean, I liked King Crimson a lot. I liked anything that was kind of out of the ballpark a little bit. Some of the stuff I've come to later on, like uh, Bad Company, I just love that kind of feel, you know, can't get enough of your love. There's it, it, something about it. And some stuff lends itself to stadium rock. Some stuff lends itself to things. We were talking about Brian Adams' day, Summer of 69. You know, I, I tend to identify with, 
songs as opposed to drummers. Drummers, I tend to go for the jazz jazz guys like Max Roach, maybe Steve Gadd, of course. No one's going to be surprised Cole. by what you just said, by the way. No one who really knows your drumming would be surprised by what you just said with Max Roach and Jojo Mayer, who's yeah. just I just adore that guy because he's because he, if you listen to if you watch any stuff on Jojo Mayer on YouTube, it, it, it's always on the money. And I see a lot of drummers uh, like Weckles and Vinny, they, they're just phenomenal. But sometimes I go, we're all doing the same stuff now, all this kind of intricate blah, 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 blah. Gad does something and, I, and I'm just drawn into it. Whereas a lot of the other stuff, I'm just kind of, I'm impressed by it, you know, or I'm supposed to be impressed, but it's almost like gunslinging. We'll have more from the great pick weathers coming up in the next two days. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.